What to make of France's biggest show of unity since World War II? Three million marching in Paris and across the country with rallies around the world as well. Some 60 foreign leaders in town. President Hollande correct in stating that for one day, Paris was indeed the center of the world. Now, after the bloodbath at satirical weekly Charlie Hebdo, the targeting of police and shoppers in a kosher grocery store and parts of Paris on Friday under lockdown. Slogans in the march included, I am Shaudi, I am Jewish, I am police. Now, well, it's Monday. The French have returned to work. And is the nation any different? Does that show of unity extend to all of France? Do people have, for instance, the right to say, I'm not Shaudi? Will Sunday's marches win over those tempted by the politics of hate? Some of the questions we'll be broaching with our panel. We'll hear how the government's strategy is to further preach the French model of laïcité, assimilation. This in a secular republic that's uh, uh, supposed to be blind to religion and race. Finally, are those who rallied for freedom ready to give up a little more of it in the interest of increased surveillance? We'll also be asking. Today in the France 24 debate, uh, we're looking at uh, France after uh, the uh, big rally on Sunday with us, publisher Arash uh, Derambar. She's also city councillor uh, for the UMP party in yes. the uh, in the uh, Paris suburb of Courbevoie. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for your invitation. Welcome as well uh, to Justin E. Smith, who teaches uh, history and philosophy at the University of uh, Paris Diderot. The man sitting next to him, Fabrice Eppelboin. Good of uh, the French Political Science Institute Sciences Po. Welcome back to the show, sir. And uh, France 24's very own, Salima Belhaj. Good evening. Good evening, Salima. Uh, the France 24 debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, our hashtag F24Debate. Yeah, 3.4 <clears throat> million, according to many estimates, uh, uh, people in the streets on Sunday, a sea of humanity in Paris, and uh, scenes like this one. There it is. Uh, not every day that you see the French cheer their police force. Fabrice Appelboin, what's gotten into France? This is really the first time I've ever seen that in France. Usually policemen are not popular at all, especially in France. I mean, I've seen this in the United States happen, but in France, this is the very first time I've witnessed such a scene. You attended Sunday's march? Yeah, of course, like everybody else. What were your thoughts when you saw this? It was incredibly quiet. It's very different from the usual gathering you can have find in the streets of Paris. It was incredibly quiet, incredibly respectful for, for the death, for what happened. And uh, it was very emotional. All right. Uh, Justin Smith, you were in the crowd as well. Sure. I saw perhaps 90 percent uh, uh, people that uh, gave me cause for optimism, heartening scenes, and perhaps 10 percent uh, troubling displays of ethno-nationalism and encroaching Islamophobia. Uh, but overall, I was, I was, I was. Uh, so, how, how did you sort the one from the other? Well, of course, this is this is a, a first impression and very hard to hard to sort, uh, uh, but. There were some nationalist slogans. There was also a lot of skepticism about the co-optation of the of the the, the, the the tragedy by the state, by by the Hollande administration, and people saying, <coughs> "I am not Charlie, but uh, 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 I am here for the following reasons." And in many cases, we had very uh, 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 elaborate uh, positionings of people in their on, on their on their posters, on their T-shirts, uh, trying to say. Um, um, I have some doubts. I, I think there are some elements of hypocrisy here, but I'm here anyway because, as my neighbor put it, everyone has to be here. Everyone is here. And why did you go? Because uh, everyone had to be there. <laughs> um, um, and certainly it was... Uh, because everyone had to be there? Well, I, I mean, I certainly um, had my own doubts about the, about the co-optation by the state. And, um, and I thought that there was a sort of uh, uh, early signs of what looked like uh, what I very well remember from the post-9-11 jingoism in the United States. Uh, this is already happening. It's 
almost certainly only, only going to get worse, <coughs> and yet this was a sincere, uh, popular display of what I consider uh, very decent and human um, um, emotion. All right, that comparison with post-9-11 in the United States, we're going to pick up on it in a moment. But first, let me ask you, Arash Dehambash, you marched on Sunday. Of course. Um, the particularity of uh, this period was that I knew four of them, uh, Kabu, uh, Wolanski, Sharb, and um, Tinius were friends of me because we published them. Uh, and, uh, I took a lunch just before Christmas with Sharb and, um, and Tinius, just before Christmas. And uh, my first thing um, is coming to, to salute all of the family of the victims, uh, of the artists, the cartoons, but uh, also to the family of the uh, Jewish persons who well, died, and to the policemen. Um, my second thing is that in France, the cry of sadness of last Wednesday became, became a cry of uh, happiness last yesterday, Sunday. Because I it was an uplifting moment. I saw an amazing s Sunday. It was the first thing that I, I am so proud to be French, you know, because I was uh, 18 the, the last uh, 12 July 1998, when France won the World Cup, I was a young guy. Which is the last time we've seen this many people in the streets. But yesterday was more strong. It was something that I cry. I promise you that I was crying yesterday because I saw the people of my country uh, stand up and say to the uh, terrorists, we are not afraid. We are not afraid. Um, this is the most stronger picture that I saw yesterday was so all this um, chef, prime minister and president in the Boulevard Voltaire. Um, they were walking. It was amazing. This street, I, everybody in Paris knows this street. And they said to all the uh, tourists, we are not afraid. So you went there in part in tribute to those uh, cartoonists and uh, satirists that you knew and in part to show that, that you're not afraid. Uh, France, believe it or not, does not limit itself to Paris. There are other cities in the country. Uh, you were in Rouen on Sunday, your, your native city, which is uh, northwest of the capital. There, some people went to march and others didn't. Yeah, for those who didn't march, it was more of being together and think what's next. Not marching, uh, saying I'm not Charlie, doesn't mean those people are not condemning what happened. And they are not, they are of course condemning the attacks. But they didn't want to march because for them it was kind of hypocrite because they told me that we were not reader of Charlie Hebdo. We really didn't like uh, the cartoon for that moment. So I cannot say I'm Charlie, but of course I'm condemning what's happening. And they were sitting in the couch watching the television thinking, what's next? What is going to happen to the France on Monday? I mean, on today, because this unity is beautiful. This solidarity is beautiful. But is it going to continue? There was remembering the day when French were marching together against extremism. It was political. It was when Jean-Marie Le Pen arrived. Uh, in the second round of the, the presidential election the, in 2002. In 2002. And everybody was thinking that, saying that, oh, we are all sons of immigrants are going to change the things. But 10 years after, things didn't change. And Marine Le Pen can be also in the second round of the next presidential election. So those people who were not marching were saying, we were thinking that the things are going to change 10 years back. They didn't. So why are we going to march again? The, the problem is so deep that marching is not going to solve anything. And so uh, an element of disillusion. Fabrice Appelboin, on, on, on that score, uh, there was this high emotion, and you, 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 you all described it, having gone to this march on, on Sunday. Uh, but is it ephemeral? Is it? What is going to be the lasting effect? I'm not sure there will be a lasting effect. I'm not sure it was such a union. I mean, uh, <coughs> Marine Le Pen was excluded from this political gathering some 
foreign politician far worse than Marine Le Pen were invited and <clears throat> the Muslim population had a really hard time relating to this slogan, Je suis Charlie. It was very difficult for them. So it wasn't such a huge union. It wasn't kidnapped by the, poli the French politician because they probably didn't, didn't know how to do that, but it wasn't such a national union. And we have to realize this. Asking for uh, somebody who believes in uh, the Muslim religion to say je suis Charlie is maybe a little bit harsh. And maybe we could have thought about something different if we wanted to gather everybody in, the French, uh, in, the French, uh, in France around something. I'm not sure there will be any form of union tomorrow. Do you, Arash de Rambarash, do you think that there should have been a slogan that perhaps was more inclusive for those who were offended by Sh Charlie Hebdo's cartoons? Um, we have to understand that France is not uh, USA or Grand Britain. In France, we haven't got communities. The only one community is the French community, the Republican community. People can and could have um, religion, spiritual uh, mind. But this is wrong to say that Muslim persons, uh, Jewish persons, there is French uh, with confession, Jewish with confession, Muslim. We have to, um, to give the best a best education to the young people in France. Uh, we have to give two solutions now. Um, a solution of education and a solution of security. Because we, we passed the bill, the last bill, last uh, September or November, against the anti-terrorism. And we know that uh, this bill was not um, um, too much uh, sufficient, can we say? Wasn't enough, you're saying? Enough, enough, sorry. Uh, 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 to, fight. To, to, to fight the terrorists now. Uh, uh, we have to change, we have to change uh, the, uh, the um, understanding of the uh, facts. If I may, this bill was about electronic surveillance mostly. Those terrorism, the, those terrorists were not using electronic means. Are you sure of that? I'm absolutely sure. What can we say Koulibaly that? Koulibaly wasn't Fabrice. using a smartphone for the past year because they knew about electronic surveillance. Everybody knew about, about electronic you surveillance. You know that how, how many people By are going way, to Syria, By the way, I think Fabrice. that take, talking about France as not being structured by a religious community is being blind to what is happening right now in France. This is specifically what has brought us what we're living right now. We have to acknowledge that there are some religious-based communities in France. Do you know how Koulibaly and the brothers talked together between the, t the, uh, the attempt of last week? Bec with Facebook and with Twitter. And I will say uh, something on more. Earth are you going just to say something more. Put Facebook you know how many under French? Surveillance. Fabrice, do you know how many ben French? Ali didn't manage to no, put don't talk Facebook about Ben Ali, about my friend. I'm talking about French people. One million, one thousand persons were uh, went to Syria, to Iraq. Now, lots of them, lots of them. Um, recruits by Facebook. But that's a, that's a failure of the ideal of French Republican identity as citizenship first that you're talking about. And the important question is if these people fail to see themselves as French citizens first and then uh, their confessional identity mm. comes second, where does the responsibility for that lie? Um, and you suggest education as an important... This is the component. most important. Of course it's important, course. You, but... You if, see what's happened to the school. But as my, as my neighbor suggests, mm. I think if there is a failure there, it might have something to do with, uh, with, with the traditional French inability to recognize that like Great Britain or like the United States or Canada, it is a multicultural country. The, look for example the keyword about the keyword. We 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 constate that in Facebook on Twitter, uh, in the private message, lots of keywords like uh, attempt, uh, terrorism, um, um, 
on other words, like them. At best, at best, increased electronic surveillance is only going to be a, a sort of escalation of the response, and they'll respond with more more sophisticated techniques of evading electronic surveillance. But that's not a that's not a solution. Yeah. yeah once once again, Ben Ali was the master at master. The former Tun Tunisian it, strongman. Former uh, Tunisian dictator, and he got totally overwhelmed by people knowing everything there is to know about electronic surveillance. This is not a solution. Sadima Belhaj. No, I just wanted to, to respond to what you said, that there is no religion in France. We are just one community. Mm. If you say that, then you have to explain to the Muslim community why everybody turning to the Muslim community, asking, do you condemn the attack? Mm -hmm. Of course they condemn because they are French and they, they condemn attacks, they condemn terrorism. But there is a lot mm -hmm. of Muslim uh, in the Muslim community in France today that okay. are thinking that uh, the state of France is not considering this no. community because it's if you turn into true. a community saying, do you condemn? It's, it's like it's 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 the way of thinking that all the Muslim are potential terrorists. It's not true. This try, is the try, feeling. This is the feeling of a friend, the Muslim I community. Today. I understand what we say, but um, my origin is Persian. I never felt that. You know why? Because we have got a problem, a big problem now in our country. The problem is that if we want to make a assimilation with our particularity, I am very proud to be. My origin is uh, Persian. But my country is French. My education is come from French. Uh, I uh, took health from France. Um, when I was taking a bus, it was French bus. You know, we have to say that in the school. In France, no, lots of people, lots of young, think that uh, uh, what France can do for us, but I want to say to them what you are doing for your country. No, but this is also the problem no, how people about, were dealing with immigration. About, because no, I am. I come from immigration. No, but you, can't you say know that, to that me. in the suburbs and everything, no, people have coming, been putting I, apart. I am coming from suburb. No, you no. know how. Sorry, I'm this sorry. is a typical no. French political way. No, I am of citizen, Fabrice. Taking a, a few example that have totally and perfectly integrated the French. Culture. Arash is a good example. We have a few. We have one in the National uh, Education Ministry who is remarkable. Uh, the problem is when you look at the suburb, this is not what is happening. All right, we're going to pick up on that point when we come back. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate.